They killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. He died like a dog. Let's have a look at this uh, viral clip of Trump versus Obama announcing assassinations of enemies of America. And this sort of fetishization and infatuation that the establishment have with class, like that Trump is vulgar and that Barack Obama is kind of a classy guy. You know what I mean? Sort of like, look at him. That's what a president should be like. Classy and kind of handsome, like because Trump's all mad, you know? Like, are we caught in just aesthetic differences now and matters of taste. It's something I wrote about in my essay about attending the Republican National Convention. Like that, you know, like that there's a sense from, say, liberal folk that Hulk Hogan, <laughs> like well, I, when I saw that, when Hulk Hogan goes, the man that took a shot at my president, rah! I tore his top off. I must say that I was like, whoa, this is crazy. But is it really that different than Jack Black endorsing Joe Biden, then retracting that? Is it that different than George Clooney, like going, I like Joe Biden, I don't like Joe Biden? What are we saying that some celebrities are sort of all really cool? Is that what it is? Is that what it comes down to? Because shouldn't we really be discussing the distinction between policies when it comes to global war or the policies when it comes to massacres? Wouldn't you love it if you felt that you were behind a political movement that said, we are going to end all wars on day one? Some of you say Trump is saying that. He did say that he wants to sort out stuff in the Middle East, didn't he? I would just love one candidate, and I don't even know if I have the courage to do it. You know, I know that I don't have the courage to do it. Like, it's all about, listen, peace, peace, peace. We're not going to take money from the military industrial complex. We're not going to take money from Big Pharma. We're going to demonopolize and break down big tech, big pharma. We're going to, day one, we're going to start attacking these, cor these corporate globalist forces. Wouldn't that excite you somehow? Would that excite you? Would you like that? The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. <laughs> I think Trump's is better. It's so sort of funny, isn't it? Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. It's like he's... It's not like he's not taking it seriously. He is taking it seriously, but... Like Shane Gillis has probably done the defining stand up on this as well. Let me tell you something. Abu cried, he cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> Cry baby back daddy, that's what we were all calling. <laughs> When he says it's like he was excited that he was in the situation room. The beautiful dogs, that beautiful dog's bit of stand-up is so dope. I feel like what it is, is that the left have an infatuation with aesthetics and style because increasingly politics is voided of true values. Say like Barack Obama has done all those deals with Netflix, gets paid a lot of money for after dinner speeches and all of that stuff. And it's like, oh, these are all premium blue chip brands. It's good to do stuff with Netflix. And Trump, it's like those mad sneakers that are all gold and everything or the Bibles that he does or whatever. But, you know, when you if you spend any time watching Trump, I remember a mate of mine said this years ago about Margaret Thatcher. He goes, don't watch too much Margaret Thatcher because you'll start liking her. And if you're from the, like the era that I'm from and the place that I'm from, you don't like Margaret Thatcher because she closed down all the industry and she messed with working class people, destroyed people in Nottingham and the North and all over the British Isles, right, through her policies. But if you watch her, she's like, it's just alluring <laughs> to watch them. Absolutely not. Like, you know, when people have got political charisma and clout, it's, it's, uh, it's seductive. And if you watch too much Trump, like, you know, I'm saying this about Trump detractors. I know you guys mostly love him. But, like, you start to... <laughs> He's too funny, man. And even here, where you're invited to not like him, I like him. The United States launched a targeted operation against that compound. They did a lot of shooting and they did a lot of blasting. A lot of blasting. And like, this is it. Yeah, because he's riffing, isn't he? That's what Gillis points out as well in his bit on it. Like, uh, you'd think they'd go through the front door and not these guys. Even not going through the front door, you know, you think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. He died like a dog. But his death does not mark the end of our effort. A beautiful dog. A powerful dog. So that's like the aesthetics of power. It's the aesthetics of power.
even people that feel that they're like pro post structuralist sort of cultural critics think, you know, like mm, we really have understood the culture and the dynamics of power, but really people can't handle having a president that sort of talks like that. But it doesn't go they, you know, after after a firefight there were after a firefight there we Bin Laden was killed. Like it's all sort of serious and sensible. We can't have Trump talking about beautiful dogs and stuff. We give thanks for the men who carried out this operation. And I don't get any credit for this, but that's okay. I never do. <laughs> and here we are. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. And I'm writing a book. <laughs> I think I wrote 12 books. All did very well. The joke is vulgarity. That's the joke. that we're, What we're being asked to laugh at there is Barack Obama is classy and Donald Trump is vulgar. And I know, I know because I know them, they would be so shrill and hysterical. No, my opinions, they mean something. Did Obama drone a bunch of kids? Did Obama bail out the banks in 2008? He did, didn't he? Right. So we're not talking about Jesus, are we? We're talking about a politician who, whilst in the early part of his career, gar he garnered a lot of attention. And it seemed like, oh, my God, this guy might be incredible with this weird background part in like living in Indonesia for a while. His dad's Kenyan. He grew up in Hawaii. He did a bunch of work for charity, done loads of legal aid type work, you know, to being a lawyer, working sort of pro rata for good causes. This guy's going to make a difference. He's a non-white candidate. I was someone that was well into that stuff like and it seemed exciting didn't it that in at his inauguration and various ceremonies of ascension it's Mich it's um like michelle obama obviously and but also oprah and various african-american celebrities seemed like this is amazing like when he ascended it seemed brilliant and sort of trump the whole thing like people make a big deal like well, he's not got any good celebrities his inauguration they won't let him use their music pink floyd have denied the right well you know, look at where we got to, man. Like, you know, Obama begat, Biden begat what? Where are we now? Where's your coolness now? Where's your uh, where's your aesthetic? Where's your cultural elitism now? It's pretty extraordinary. And, and look, ultimately, again and again, we'll be seeing this story as independent media becomes so fleet footed and far ahead of the uh, gatekeeper centralized legacy media pack. You'll see more and more stories like this where like titles like The Guardian have to go, oh yeah, it looks like uh, Russia's fears about NATO expansion was something we should have paid more attention to. Or you'll start to see, you know, Zelensky acknowledging that in all likelihood, the war will have to be brought to an end in the event of a Trump presidency. And no one wants Ukrainian people or Russian people or Palestinian people or Israeli people or Chinese or Taiwanese people to die. Surely, 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 wherever centralized interests are threatening to the lives of individuals, we should be looking for diplomatic and peaceful solutions. Surely this is true. And perhaps that should be our shared and mutual focus rather than Barack Obama is a pretty classy guy. He's got pretty classy movies and documentaries on Netflix. Not like that vulgarian Trump bundling about in a golf buggy. I think all of us understand that we have to finish the work as soon as possible, of course, not to lose people, people lives. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the first times I've heard people saying that, you know, in the sort of within the what you might call NATO mainframe, that it would be a good idea to end this war so people stop dying. It's normally peripheral alt-right figures and Trump himself. They want people to stop dying. That's Trump, right? Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying. Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. AirsTech, the world's only scientifically proven electromagnetic field protection chip trusted by experts. AirsTech is now, can you believe this, an official partner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the UFC, giving support for world-class athletes who want to safeguard themselves from excessive electromagnetic radiation. We're all going to want that protection soon. Elite athletes within the UFC are unique in their need to optimize their performance in 25 minute bursts. Airs Tech understand the importance of optimal recovery and peak performance, trusted and used by pro athletes all around the world to elevate their game. EMF modulation technology solutions help them train harder, recover faster, and perform at their best. And wouldn't we all benefit from that? I know that I would. I keep this one device here, it's protected me from that, it's protected me from a whole lot of things. 
Get out Russian hackers. Go to airstech.com forward slash pages forward slash Russell dash brand. There's a link and use the code Russell 30 for 30% 30 off. So click the link under this and use the code Russell 30 two S's two L's for 30% off this device. Protect yourself from invisible fields of detrimental vibration. Back to the content. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.